This video is on neoplasms of the bone and the muscle. We'll start with the bone first. So bone, you can break it down into benign, malignant, and of course, never forget metastasis. We'll crank out metastasis first as the easiest one. You know there's metastasis to the bone anytime you see multiple lesions, and that goes for any anything. So if you see multiple lesions on a liver, you're thinking liver mets. If you're seeing multiple lesions on the brain, you're thinking brain mets. So if you see multiple lesions on the bone, you're thinking bone mets. Now where do they often come from? The most common primary source would be your prostate, and then close second would be breast. And when you have <clears throat> metastasis to the bone, they're often osteolytic, meaning it breaks down bone. However, one of them is osteoblastic, meaning it builds bone. Do you remember what that is? That'd be prostate cancer. So if they say this person has multiple bone lesions, you know it's mets. And if it says it's osteoblastic, the primary source is from the prostate. They don't need to say the prostate. They don't need to say anything more. All they have to say is osteoblastic mets, and you know that the patient has prostate cancer. That's mets. Crank that out really fast. Let's talk about benign. So benign, you can have several things. You can have osteoma. Osteoma is just a benign tumor of your bone. It's commonly found in your facial bone, like your jaw, so face. And it's associated with something. Hopefully you remember from our talk on colon cancer what it's associated with. If you don't remember, I'll give you a hint. How about if the patient had impacted or supernumerary teeth? Ringing a bell? Colon polyps, ringing a bell? That'd be your Gardner syndrome. Gardner syndrome. So Gardner syndrome is just colon, polyps, and osteomas, numer supernumerary teeth, infected teeth. So a common way to ask is a patient coming with osteoma on their jaw, and they ask, what other investigations would you order? Investigate for things like colon polyps or colon cancer. So fecal blood, um, colonoscopy, etc., etc. So osteomas associated with Gardner syndrome. Next up is osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma. We put them together because it's both a cancer of your osteoblast of osteoblast. That's the cell that builds bone. That's the cell that secretes that matrix. We call that osteoid and that matrix eventually becomes bone. So if you see osteoid, osteoma, you know is a, a cancer of your osteoblast. If you see osteoblastoma, it's a cancer of your osteoblast. So on x-ray, you will see this big ring of reactive bone. To so pick that up on x-ray, and then in the middle, you'll see that matrix, that osteoid. And the matrix is radiolucent, so look like a little clear spot. These are very similar because they're both cancer of the osteoblast look the same on x-ray. However, they have some differences. For example, osteoid, osteoma, I'll just write it as OO, is found in the diaphysis, diaphysis bones. Osteoblastoma, I'll denote as OB, is found in your vertebrae. That's a dead giveaway right, right there. So OB is found in your vertebrae. OO is also small, usually within Two centimeters OB is going to be larger. Pain-wise, OO, uh, the cells seem to preferentially release a lot of prostaglandins, cause pain. So if you give NSAIDs, the pain goes away. OB NSAIDs don't work. So I'll say NSAIDs don't work. That's just some history clues that can point you in the right direction, okay? So know the difference, very easy. The vertebrae thing is probably the, the easiest one to remember. Or they like to touch on the aspirin. So they'll talk about a kid with bone pain and then at night the mother will give him aspirin, him or her aspirin, and then the pain goes away, you're thinking of OO or osteoid osteoma. Next benign neoplasm, osteochondroma. Tell me, what's in the name? Chondro, chondro cartilage. So it's a bone neoplasm with a cartilage cap. It actually starts in your marrow. So it's continuous with your marrow and continuous with the medulla of your bone, the inside of your bone. So it kind of grows out from the inside. And then at the end, it's like a, like a mushroom. It has a little cartilage cap. So we call it osteochondroma. And it likes the metaphysis. And I'll also write continuous with medulla slash marrow. 
One last one, this will be your giant cell tumor. There's not a lot of cells we talked about when it comes to bone cell. Which of the cell types is a giant cell? Which of the cell types is multinuclear, large? Be a cancer of your osteoclast. So cancer of your osteoclast. And you need to know is the only epiphyseal tumor. So it likes the epiphyses. It's called giant cell because if you look at it microscopically, you'll have all those giant cells. And grossly, you'll see this bubbling kind of expansion of the bone. So it's large, not only microscopically, but large and bubbly, grossly. So you see this bubble-like appearance on the bone. Again, picture in my notes, make sure you check that out. Done with benign, let's talk about malignant. Malig. You can have osteosarcoma. You can have chondrosarcoma. Ewing, guess what? Sarcoma, so just um, all these are malignant. Judging by the name, we'll start with osteosarcoma first. Osteosarcoma next to multiple myeloma is the most common bone tumor. So osteosarcoma is somewhat common as a tumor of your osteoblast. And if you take a sample of it, it'll show those osteoblasts, these mutated osteoblasts, so we call that pleomorphic because they basically mutated away with some osteoid, that's that matrix. Because it is osteoblast, they are still kind of secreting matrix, not good matrix, because it's a cancer bud matrix and then less. So pleomorphic cells with osteoid. You need to know it's bimodal and it's epidemiology, so likes the metaphysis. And some x-ray findings. Causes, causes severe bone reaction. So you're gonna have bone reaction and it creates this fuzzy looking appearance on x-ray we call that sunburst also causes the periosteum that's you recall that's the layer that covers the bone cause the periosteum to lift apart lift up so this is your bone and the covering of your bones your periosteum that periosteum lifts up and we call that a codman triangle or just caught him in triangle. Very, very classic x-ray findings that you need to know. There's some associations with osteosarcoma, so these include things like Paget's, just from all the cell turnover, drugs. There's a drug we talked about earlier in bone pharmacology. It's a, I'll give you a hint, it was a PTH analog. Do you remember what that drug is? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> We've come this far along in our in our block, so I'm no longer gonna tell you what it is, so you have to just remember it, okay? So drugs and retinoblastoma is a huge one that you absolutely positively need to know. So we have all our associations here. What do we do whenever we see an association? Think about everything we know about that association. Synthesize into a step by question. I'm not gonna do patches for you because we just talked about patches. So take a second, just pause and do patches yourself. Think of everything you know about patches. Remember the stages of patches. Remember what it presents with. Drugs, there was that drug we talked about. Retinoblastoma, mutation of your RBG, that's your tumor suppressor gene, um, causes loss of white red eye reflex. When you shine a light into a kid's eye, they don't have that red, red eye reflex. So if they give a kid with, uh, without a red light reflex, says the kid has retinoblastoma in my ass, what in the future is the kid at risk of developing? Osteosarcoma. Very important you know that. So these two go together. That's osteosarcoma. Let's talk about chondrosarcoma. Chondrosarcoma. So it is a malignant tumor of, what do you think this means? Cartilage. And um, like your previous non-malignant cartilage tumor, it's gonna come out from your medulla, but it's just so much nastier looking. It doesn't have that nice little little cartilage cap look like a mushroom. It's just gonna blow up your marrow, basically. Commonly seen in the pelvis. That is a big one. Most often, you don't see a lot of things in the pelvis, but this is a big one, so know that it's seen in the pelvis. Last but not least, Ewing sarcoma. So Ewing comes from neuroendocrine cells, and all neuroendocrine cells kind of look similar. They look very small, very blue. So um, these are just, called small blue 
cells. And it loves your diaphysis. And the cancer causes your periosteum to, to really react towards it. It causes your periosteum to kind of grow in layers. So if this is your bone, then your periosteum kind of grows in layers and it looks kind of like an onion skin. So we call it onion skinning. Now, in my pediatric rotation, I worked with a human onc doctor who told me a story of way back when um, they would see all these neuroendocrine tumors. And they knew they were neuroendocrine tumors because they all had small blue cells. But they couldn't tell you the specific cancer because they didn't have, you know, markers back then, especially genetic markers. But now they do, and so they can tell these cancers apart. There's a specific genetic marker for Ewing's. Do you know what that is? If you said a translocation of 11 and 22, you'd be right, but that doesn't mean anything to anybody. How does this cause cancer? When we talked about the Philadelphia chromosome in CML, we talked about how it increased tyrosine kinase activity and increased cell signaling, increased cell proliferation. That's what caused the cancer. How does this cause cancer? Know what you're learning. Don't just memorize things because it, because memorizing things suck. Okay, it takes a lot of time. You're gonna to have to look at flashcards over and over if you're just trying to memorize something. But if you learn something, it sticks with you. You actually save more time if you take the extra second to, to learn something. And I'm going on a spiel here, but it's important. I've always enjoyed school. I've always enjoyed learning, but in my last years in college and in the start of med school, I kind of lost that enjoyment. I didn't really know why. It, and I found out why. It's because I was memorizing things and then taking a test and then kind of brain dumping it. I was no longer learning things. Then when I finally took the second to actually learn pathophys, learn mechanism, learn things, then, then I started to enjoy myself again. I started to say, well, that's kind of cool. I didn't know that's how it happened. So that's, and so I want you to learn things. That's one of my rules of taking a step. So to actually learn things. How does this cause cancer? Well, you have the, something on your chromosome 22, that's your EWS gene. That's an RNA binding protein or a transcription. In fact, you have something on your chromosome 11, that's your FL1 gene. That codes for a proto-oncogene. When you fuse them together, that's bad news That's what causes Ewing sarcoma. Now you know why, okay? So I don't have a lot of rules and step. Um, I only have two, I think. Learn instead of memorize. I don't, I don't have time to go through everything in, in the first aid book. I try to, whether it's in my video or my notes. But if you see something in the first aid that you've never encountered before, don't just put it in a flashcard and memorize it. Actually look it up on Google, it takes, takes 10 seconds, and find out why it is. Okay, so learning, that's the first rule. And the second rule is just never memorize associations. Think of everything you know about the associations, synthesize into step by question. So those are my only two rules of doing well in this step. Okay, so if you follow those two rules, you'll be fine. <laughs> this is supposed to be a short video, but I'm going off on a tangent. I think it's important, and I think you need to know that, uh, those, those rules, but all right, we'll go, we'll go back to the steps so you don't close the video on me. So we're, <laughs> we're done with Ewing sarcoma and we're actually done with bone tumors. But this is muscular skeletal. So we're not just only talking about skeletal things, we're talking about muscular stuff. Let's talk about some muscle neoplasms. You can have rhabdomyoma, that's just a benign tumor of a muscle. And rhabdomyomas are highly associated with something, tuberous sclerosis. That's when you have mutated tumor suppressor genes and you just get these neoplasms. Tuberous sclerosis, what is everything you know about tuberous sclerosis? If you haven't done it yet, then it's not really a, a fair question to ask, but if you have, then I want you to blurt out everything you know about tuberous sclerosis. What does it look like? What does it present with? What are some things that are associated with it? So you have rhabdomyomas, you have things like astrocytomas, you have angiomyolipomas of the kidneys, you have skin lesions, so angiofibroma is a big one. You see skin tags usually around the nose. Angiofibroma, and then patches. Shagreen's patches, these lumpy nodules all over the back and the torso, so shagreen, ash leaf spot, which is a pigmented spot. That is all tuberous sclerosis. So again, never just memorize associations. Think of everything you know about it. Synthesizing this step by question. So that's rhabdomyoma, benign. How about rhabdomyosarcoma? Rhabdomyosarcoma, that would be malignant. If there's a malignant muscle tumor, you know that fleshy mass is actually muscle because it will be Desmond positive. 
Desmond is an intermediate filament that's seen in muscles only. So muscle, intermediate filament. So you know you're dealing with a muscle tumor. Can affect the head, can affect the neck. Know that in young girls, it comes out of the vagina. Young girls. And it looks kind of like grapes coming out of the vagina. So I'll just write grape-like. That is your muscle tumors. Now there's something that looks kind of like a muscle or a bone tumor and it can be scary. Um, if you have repeated trauma to your muscles, your muscles will undergo metaplasia, change itself into skeletal tissue. Kind of makes it harder so that trauma doesn't hurt as much, okay? We call that myositis ossificans. Myositis ossificans. Inflammation of your muscle causes it to undergo skeletal change. And it can look really nasty on x-ray. It looks like this, this mutated skeletal mass in your muscle and you, you can freak out if you see it. But just know if it gives you a history of trauma, repeated trauma, don't forget it could be just, just metaplasia, myositis ossificans. Hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Hope my little rant didn't scare you off and just kind of take some of it to heart. I really think it's important to actually learn things, if not for a step, but actually for enjoyment of medicine. So thanks for watching. See you next time.